this is the location we're going to be filming our short uh, bike choreography scene. And as I said earlier uh, in into the introduction, this is where we're going to be doing the action sequence, where we compare the use of two different special effects. We're going to use CGI later on, so we're going to put some markers on the imitation guns and then not add any fake blood or anything. And then later on, after that shoot, we're going to do the same again, exactly the same fight-wise, but then use uh, prosthetics for bone breaks. We use fake blood, uh, a little bit of latex, a broken nose, and a couple of you know, teeth uh, spat out. Uh, and that's the whole kind of consensus of the, uh, of the short behind the scenes, is to what's better and what works and what's more practical, etc. cetera. And then we just go from here and we select this. Hello, so I'm working as the um, weapon handler on set because the two guns we're using uh, are mine. Um, this first one is quite a small, simple BB gun, nothing fancy, just, you know, simple cock every time you shoot, fires air. Um, this is a bit heftier. This is a, uh, a full-on starter pistol, costs a lot of money, fires these blanks, um, holds ten and around a very loud, just like a real gun. So I'm mostly here just to make sure that no one uh, injures himself uh, while using them, no one shoots them directly at anyone and that they're used safely. Due to the nature of the shoot, because we, uh, we have like guns and imitation firearms and uh, knives and stuff, we've chosen uh, quite an isolated location. As you can see here, we're in an abandoned swimming pool, just a, a couple of metres uh, from our university. Uh, and obviously because there's blanks and stuff, uh, which is very like obviously realistic sounding gun noises, uh, we inform the uh, local police authorities, let them know that this is happening uh, at this location at this time. So if someone does call anything in or if the police are called up, they'll be like, yep, yeah, we have uh, confirmation that someone is filming here with uh, imitation firearms, etc. Uh, and yeah, so if someone just passed me the gun here, for the CGI part, uh, I say CGI or special effects part uh, of the shoot, we are adding um, coloured markers to the gun. Uh, in this case, we'll be adding blue because it's a contrasting colour to the orange. So it's a bit like how a green screen works for, um, for the editing. So what we're going to do is grab some blue ones here. And let's pop it on the side of the gun. Uh, just to confirm, this is for like muzzle flashes uh, that uh, the animator is going to put in uh, post. Because the gun uh, <coughs> rear ejects the blanks, so nothing comes out the front, so there won't be any kind of flash or anything like that when you actually fire it. Yeah, exactly. So as you can see, we've got the tracking pad here, tracking pad here. So either way, no matter how the gun's going to be looking, we can easily lock onto that in post and add muzzle flashes uh, and be nice and good. And uh, looking really cool. So Austin's using the access to film the mic tools and then the sound's getting behind the scenes. Hi, uh, I'm Austin, so I'm doing the camera and the DOP work for this shoot. Uh, it's just going to go through some of the lenses we're using. <coughs> for this shoot, I think, because it's a close-up fight scene, we're going to be looking at wide-angle lenses. So I'll be using the 16-35 uh, 2.8, really super wide. And uh, any really close-ups, we'll be using the 14mm 2.8. Again, keeping everything at 2.8 easy to manage the apertures and the exposures. Uh, a 50, if we want to go for close-ups, that's a 1.2, so we can get a really nice depth of field. We might not use that, depending on what, uh, what kind of shots we've got going on. But yeah, we're basically just going to be shooting on wide angles. We've got a mic, and then uh, a couple of other lenses. The camera we're using is actually the A7S, which is crazy in low light, because I know we're going to be shooting in low light. So this is uh, perfect for this location, seeing as we've got no lights. <coughs> little adapter ring, there's no autofocus, but we're pros, we don't use autofocus. And uh, yeah, it's got slow-mo capabilities as well, which should be quite cool. When we're doing the fight scenes and all the blood's blowing out, the nice slow-mo on that. We'll um, make everything look pretty, because that's my job, I make people look pretty. So we've just come outside the set to meet Topher, uh, one of our fight, uh, fight coordinators slash Combat choreographer, expert, 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 cool. Uh, so, expert, like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, can we just give me a quick overview of what you'll be doing today? Uh, I'm fighting stunt perform with John. I'm being beaten up by John. Will I kill him? Uh, would you just like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name is Veronica. Um, I'm a makeup artist, and I've been doing this now for over a year. 
Um, I have trained uh, in Christine Bundell Makeup Academy in London and I really enjoy um, special effects makeup. That's what I would like to do the most. Um, today I think I'm going to be doing some bullet guns and scratches and all sorts of things. I think I'm going to start using wax and um, I've got different palettes that I usually use. Um, I think we're going to be using blood as well, yeah? Okay. These are prosthetic makeups, so I will be using as well some special glues and of course I'll have, I brought the removers with me and everything for later on. And I think we're going to have fun. Cool. Sweet. Can you just, uh, if you just go down and you just point out uh, what bits are what? Uh, I mean, obviously we can see a nice little uh, yeah. bone sticking out of uh, um, some skin there. <laughs> these are two pieces made with latex wax and other bits and pieces. Um, I usually use uh, the special glues to stick it on there as well. Um, I might be using wax as well later on. I've got uh, my Bruce wheel um, and different bits and pieces. I got the blads here, different type of blads, darker, scab, um, powder. I got as well. I don't know if we're gonna use them today, but they are blood capsules. Okay. Yeah. So is that for when someone gets punched in the mouth or that's they can right, just yes. pop it and then, cool, yeah. that's good, that would be, be pretty good to have actually, yeah. Okay, um, what else? I've got bits and pieces here as well that we can use to cover the skin, this is like cut plastic, mm -hmm. it's like a very fine prosthetic material, um, yeah, different tools and mm. of course the palettes, illustrator palettes, which um, are to, to paint the prosthetics very realistically. So how many years did it take you to train uh, to do this? Um, just a few months to be honest, but I've been doing this for a while now. Mm. Um, because I really like prosthetics, so that's my mm. dream, to work, be able to work in a studio. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's like a passion, because uh, like, um, obviously with, uh, with a lot of um, CGI guys, uh, they, they do it because they really enjoy it. Did you, so did you always want to be like, working in like, makeup? Um, yes, I've been a painter for many, many years, so I think makeup is really... Um, what I want to do right now, mm. well, just for the past few years, and um, yeah, I think we will have fun today. Yeah, good, yeah. awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're here with uh, Topher and Veronica at the moment, and we're just quickly applying some broken nose makeup because uh, this is quite uh, a complicated like scene. With the practical, we're only doing it a couple of times because we've, we've only got so much uh, prosthetics and blood. Whereas with the CG, it was very easy to just kind of like do as many as we can because it can be fixed in post. Because the, the whole like blood splatter, the gunshots are in post. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> so from what I understand, it's actually like a like a like a wax. Uh, yes, yes, yes. A wax. I'm just trying to smooth this now, just to make it blend with the skin. And then we start the coloring. Yeah. So as you can see here, we have um, a lot of our crew in a very funny position. The reason for this is, so we have Austin who has to stay in the same position. Um, essentially, we're doing one move, pause, hold that position. So then, say for example, our actor um, Topher's been slashed here. We let him run off, quickly rip the t-shirt, apply the blood, put him in the position he was before. So then it looks like he's actually been slashed. And then we're doing that with each um, major part of the scene. So we're also going to get a nice bone break coming out of uh, John's arm. We're also going to have a couple of teeth being spit out. Uh, and we've got to get this done as soon as we can because it's getting darker and darker. Rolling sound. Cut this. Yeah, cut this. Rolling camera. Uh, wait, wait. Blood spit, take one. Blood and tooth spit, take one. Action. Oh my god, oh my god. Take off. Or take two. And remember, biggest swap you can. Action. Action. And cut. Nice. nice. That was the one. <laughs> so we're here uh, with our, both of our fight programs for today. We've got John and Topher. And uh, they're quickly going to talk about their experiences of today. So it's been quite a busy one, a bit chaotic. Uh, just talk us through the process of what you both went through today. 
Well, first of all, um, we um, we met up yesterday just to practice yeah. and go through some of the co like choreography, and uh, I mean, he's had some training, I've had some training, so it's uh, it wasn't too difficult to to implement those movements today. Though um, I think repeating those movements on a regular basis, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a bit different coming up with a routine in 45 minutes on grass mm. than doing a swimming pool um, on concrete. On concrete, we didn't we didn't think about that one. No, 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 no we did not. <laughs> it, it worked out well. You, you've told us about the choreography process. What about um, this, like the kind of special effects side of things? Like obviously we did a lot of digital stuff, which um, it was obviously going to be done in post, and then we, we were doing a lot of prosthetics and kind of like blood and stuff. Um, tell us about the process of that, and which uh, which ultimately do you prefer and why? Well, I, I, I think with prosthetics, I mean, it was, um, you always have to be very careful about not um, ruining it and, uh, and making sure that you are still able to be in character without ruining any makeup that you have on you already. And um, I've always seen the blood caps and blood god awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah those are nice. We'll close your tongue. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> I think performance wise, it's easier doing it when you look kind of like this. Absolutely. Yeah, so you can kind of bounce off each other's reactions and you actually see the blood as opposed to imagining it. Mm. But yeah, again, I think my nose is the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, lastly, with the kind of major question of the, the dissertation, um, the, the question is how is the believability of film affected by the use of CGI or practical effects? In both of your opinions, what do you think looks and works better and affects the believability of film? Yeah, well, it depends sort of what you're looking for style-wise. Mm. But I think personally, using realistic effects like this always sort of looks, looks better. Good. It makes the performance look better, mm. and um, you can do it right then and there, so you know exactly what it's going to look like. Mm. Just a good touch up with it, and then if it's something doesn't work, you can tweak it. Mm. Whereas if you're trying to change it all in post by putting the CGI in, you realise something Absolutely. like the arms not quite the right position, then you're a little bit stuck. Mm. Yeah, I, I, couldn't agree, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I feel um, a combination of both um, without overcompensating one with the other. Um, I think um, I do prefer the prosthetics yeah. just because we can see each, it's, it's visual and film is all about being visual. I think when it comes to um, CGI, like you said, you know, touching up, I think, I think that is important to have that option to fix things where, where we might see necessary. So I'm here in the editing suite at the moment with JJ, he's one of our main uh, animators for the special effects sequence. Um, so JJ, do you want to talk through the process of how we managed to do the, the gore? Well first of all, all you have to do is like get some footage and then, you, and then you've got to put blood effect over it. So, so far you've got to get a stop video, uh, it looks like this, boom. And then you gotta put it on top. So that's so that's what it looked like without the blood effect. So when I turn the layer on, there's the there's the blood. So in order to put the put the stock image on top, you put it on over the layer, but right now it will just turn out 
turned out with green in the way. So what I did was a little effect. So I'm going to find it. I'm going to key out the green by using key light. So little dropper tool here. So key out the green and away goes the green. Right now, that's not where he's slashed in. So are we going to move it right there? And that's how it happens. Oh, cool. So it is, it is just a case of layering it. So you, yes. seeing as you did uh, most of the effects for the, um, for the fight sequence, was there any particular moments that were quite challenging for you? And if so, what were they? Well, there was a time, for example, um, you know, when, when you got John, when he gets shot. Um, I thought you could, like, keep, keep the wound, wound to his after when he's been shot. I wanted to do a... After when he's shot, I wanted to show a wound and just place it on top, but it was really hard to like, like track, uh, position, position it on when the video was moving. So I thought practical effects would be easier. Mm. It's more believable then. Mm. It just takes up a lot of time and it's really advanced. So even um, doing a bit of CGI, you, you still you still believe practical effects are better. Well, you can work both ways. Well, you want CGI to to make make the blood effects look look awesome, also awesome believable. Yeah, and you want to add some muzzle muzzle flash effects as well, which is also good. That, that was a good answer because um, uh, one thing we're trying to find out in the video as well is. You know, not necessarily what's better, but I think it is CGI and practical effects to have to work together to make a, a scene more believable. Yeah, just what's necessary. Yeah. So I'm here with Luke, our second effects artist, and he's going to go through some of the effects that he's done for the action sequence. So Luke, your main focus was um, the bullet wounds in the last part of the scene. Could you please go through exactly how you did it um, how, and what troubles did you run into? Yeah, um, first thing that I started is to, is to find an actual wound uh, that would fit, so I actually took a real wound from a real bullet victim, <laughs> a gun, gun victim, yeah. I just keyed out, um, keyed out the tissue, <clears throat> most of the shirt, so we really kept the central part of uh, the injury, and so we just after having this uh, as a base, we can just <coughs> go over here, go take this um, sequence. That's the original sequence that we have. So we can just drag it to make it bigger. So what's happening is that he gets shot two times. So first on the chest and secondly in the shoulder. And what we wanted is to track um, different positions from the shoulder and the chest to so the bullet can follow the actual footage but for that we had to track motion and it's obviously this after effects using after effect we can do that quite rapidly um, so if i couldn't just double click you know you can see all the little key points that after effect calculated the only problem is that normally it's really a very fluid process but in that case since the shirt was pretty blank there's no proper point to track on, so I had to manually track different um, points. So especially for the um, chest one, the shoulder shot was a bit better because I have this little tiny line that made me um, do the effect. But yeah, while processing the whole tracking shots, we can clearly see there's a boom. So I have a little squirt of blood that came out of um, footage effects just coming here over here. You can clearly see frame by frame, it's really just bursting out the wall. And it's pre-keyed footage, so I just had to drag it off um, the timeline and it came off right directly, pre-keyed out. Just um, fit it with the wound, match it with the wound and um, yeah, the shot was done. Then I just had to key it out, do a little masking. So if I just go to the wound, uh, so we can see that I've actually um, did a masking job. Yeah, I've worked also on um, masking the wound out because the wound gets in and out of the of the shot. <coughs> uh, 
Um, so that's one thing that happened. And then the old process that rendered out and exported out, when we bring it to the timeline, Mm-hmm. Fit it with the right color tones, the color correction, and then the whole framing, the letterbox. Um, the effect is finished and done, and ready for the timeline to be fitting the rest of the project. Yeah. Cool. So the main problem was just tracking then, because there was a white shirt, there was no. Yeah. If you can learn okay. something from this project, will be to put a little tracker where you want to put it, I guess. Mm. Because we can wipe out whatever tracker you put on on that day and. <clears throat> That makes just the process easier, but it just took roughly two large days to accomplish this, mm. the full um, effect. So yeah. On. After that shoot, we're going to do the same again, exactly the same fight wise, but then use uh, prosthetics for bone breaks. We can use fake blood, uh, a little bit of latex, broken nose, and a couple of you know, teeth uh, spat out. Uh, and that's the whole kind of consensus of the, uh, of the short behind the scenes as to what's better and what works and what's more practical, etc. Oh, and, uh, 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 and then we'll just go from here and we'll select this. Hello, so I'm working as the um, weapon handler on set because the two guns we This is the location we're going to be filming our short uh, fight choreography scene. And as I said uh, into, into the introduction, this is where we're going to be doing the action sequence where we compare the use of two different special effects. We're going to use CGI later on, so we're going to put some markers on the imitation guns and then not add any fake blood or anything. And then later on,